So our topic of the week is on getting requirements, and um, last week's episode sort of uh, laid the groundwork for thinking about this. So, you know, when you have a when you're doing a consulting opportunity, or even if you're writing a blog post um, that's inspired from a friend's idea, um, how do you lay out the requirements and do the planning to implement the spreadsheet? And I know Chandu has written actually rather extensively on this, especially when it comes to dashboards. Um, and laying, laying out your ideas first. And I know uh, Michael Alexander also has tools, especially when it comes to dashboards. And obviously, that's the theme I'm picking because of my book um, to help you lay those out. But there's also many other things you um, could do and more applications in Excel. So how, how, do, how does the panel here go about laying out the requirements and any advice you could give our listeners? Sure. That's a really important and a very, very good question. Uh, in fact, I think more than learning Excel, if, if an analyst, a person who is starting out in a business and, and, and trying to be this, this person who can uh, help business make better decisions, if, if they have to learn one important thing, I would say learn how to understand what your business wants. And, and Excel comes second because Excel is more like a, a vehicle. If you don't know where you have to go, Excel is practically useless, right? It cannot take you to that place. Yeah. So uh, it, it so happened that I worked as a, as a requirement gathering specialist in my earlier life. <laughs> that is when I was working with company, IT companies in India. This is all I was doing. I was not building Excel applications, but I was building IT applications that, uh, and my job as a business analyst is to go to client locations sit with them, understand what they want, and make these uh, specification documents so that my design and IT team could actually build these applications. So I learned a lot about the process in that stage. Uh, to some extent, I would credit the kind of work I'm doing in Excel to the knowledge I gained as a business analyst. Uh, the important steps that some that we need to take in this, this area when, when you are understanding what the client wants are very, very simple. Uh, ignore Excel completely. If for a mind, just blank out uh, for a minute, just blank out, you know, about all the things that you can do or cannot do in Excel. And just focus on what the customer wants. So ask them a lot of questions and gather all these requirements. And don't, you don't even have to go any high tech. You don't have to use a, uh, use a tool or, or even an app or anything for that. Just take a pen and paper or, or a notebook with you and identify what they want. So let us imagine that the customer wants to build a, a dashboard or something for the sake of argument. So you would ask questions like, what, what is the need for this dashboard? What do you want to know from this? How frequently this dashboard should be updated? Uh, where is the data for this dashboard? Uh, you don't even have to ask questions like, what charts do you want? Because that's getting too specific. right? You, you want to understand what information they want. What is it that they want to gain from the dashboard? For example, it is a dashboard that tells the corporate how well their business is doing. Then, uh, then, then you would understand and then accordingly implement the right kind of chart that conveys that information. So the, the aspect of selection of charts or different Excel techniques, all of that comes way later in the game. The very first step would be to just talk and talk and talk. And after that, then you would go back and probably make a, this is how I do it. So probably make a, a rough mock-up of what is the output is, what is the output that you are going to generate. So you could make a drawing on, on a paper or you could make it in MS Paint or PowerPoint or use this excellent add-in by Mike Alexander or any other fancy tool for that matter so that you, you make a, a mock output of what is this dashboard or, or an Excel app or or a database solution is going to look like, how it is going to behave, and what happens when user interacts with it. And then show it uh, to them so that they can validate this, this particular ideas. And then you will go and ga gather the data, build all the formulas and charts. All of that happens way later. So even when I was working as an analyst, uh, one, of, one of the very first projects I did is uh, my boss asked me to build a build a scorecard for, for our division. 
So uh, this is the mistake I also did. I opened up Excel and instantly started making the scorecard there. Right? I didn't even ask her a lot of questions as to what she wanted, why the scorecard is necessary, what is wrong with the current scorecard that they're using, or you know, all of these questions. None of them I have asked. Uh, and then when I made the scorecard in Excel and I took it back to her, she she just shot me down. She said, you know, this is not what I'm expecting. I, I don't want this. So uh, it's always better to dedicate as much as 40 or 50 percent of your entire time uh, to understand what the customer wants and then come back and work, work with your tools, be it, uh, be it Excel or VBA or MS Access or whatever else you're working with. Because that portion, uh, the amount of work you need to do there will, will go down drastically if you have clarity in the requirement space. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I followed it. Uh, I like what you're saying about um, jumping in not asking any questions and then delivering something that they don't want. And my experience is that, yeah, you la ask a lot of questions up front. Why do you want to do this? What's missing right now? Um, who has to use this? Are you the only one that has to use this? And then print pages, print reports out to give to people, or is this going to be shared? All of those kind of questions. And then especially when I find out you have a system that does this already. Why do you want to do it in Excel? <laughs> then I'll find out, okay, the enterprise system can be two weeks behind, but I want something that I know I can keep up to date mm -hmm. within the minute. Um, yeah. So then all of the details that have to happen. And then getting a sense of the user's skill level because, you know, I deal with a lot of one person operations, you know, five people operations. Um, who's using this? What is their skill level? Do I have to charge you and put in the time to put in a whole lot of, of, of validation layers? because the person is not very skilled with Excel and it's going to be broken in an hour. Okay, so, yeah, we need the validation layers. Right? And then I'll get something where, you know, I'll get something and somebody's got array formulas in it and they've got pivot tables and all kind of stuff going on. And you don't okay. like those array things, I know that. <laughs> and then I can treat that project a little different. You know, maybe they just need some formula written or maybe they need some VBA code or whatever. So that's a whole different thing. But there's also as much as you can ask questions up front, you can still deliver something wrong and you can, I've, I've had this a lot. Oh, I didn't know Excel can do that. But if it can do that, then maybe it can do this other thing. <laughs> And so then I feel a little awkward because, say, they paid me for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. If I had known or if they had known, you know, maybe we could have done a whole thing in maybe 12 hours. But now I've got to go redo three hours of work to tie this whole thing together. Um, but that's nobody's fault. Um, it's just, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. And then the last thing I'll say is this one moment when I first started freelancing. Because um, you do, you ask the questions. You say, okay, this is what you're trying to do. Okay, from my press professional experience, this is what I think. And then I delivered this dashboard to a client. And her response was, oh, it looks smart, but I kind of hate it. <laughs> oh, that hurts. That hurts. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, yeah, you want a sum, but a count would be helpful. And then some percentages would say, no, I just want a sum. All this other stuff is getting in my way. And the thing there was, okay, I got it. I will fix this and give you what you want. Uh, I think I think to your point, Oz. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know what's capable. In my experience, what I found is, and maybe that maybe uh, Jordan can attest to this, the more highly graphical the output is, uh, particularly if you get to dashboards and things like that, 
the more that executives realize what they want, really what they want, uh, several months after you've actually delivered. <laughs> They're like, oh, so that's what you no, can do. True. So, yeah, so that's been my experience, anyways. And, and so I, I try not, I try not to stress about that too much because I, I realize, particularly with dashboards and stuff like that, things are going to change. But, but I wanted to hit on on two things, and I think it's a common theme that you guys both talked about that I found in my experience as well. That in gathering requirements, one of the biggest sins that I see analysts do is before they ask questions. And before they figure out what data is available, uh, they start drawing. Everybody can't wait to be an artist. You know, they can't wait to start doing mock-ups and everything else and with, without even really understanding a lot of times the business question, not understanding the, the end user, and not even understanding what data is available. And they'll go through a series of mock-ups and spend hours and bill a lot of hours uh, just to find out there really wasn't data to support what they were doing mock-ups for in the first place. Wow. Uh, I'm guessing, Jordan, I want to get your, your thoughts on this as well, uh, that you've probably experienced a lot of that at, uh, you know, on the dashboarding side as well. Has that uh, been your experience? So, okay, so what, what I'll say is, um, all right, so just to take for your latter point first. So when I first started doing this, doing independent consulting, and when I say first started, I mean January, so this is yeah, yeah, like long two, ago. two months ago. Right, right. So... Uh, one of our first projects, I was so ready to dive into it. I spent like, um, I spent several hours on it, and I was like, I'm going to over deliver this. So I, I was actually over hours, but I was like, you know, I'm going to make it awesome. And I gave it to them without even like kind of sitting in. We, I was like, oh, we'll forget about the first initial meeting. Um, so I gave it to them, and they said they had all these changes, things that I would have known if I had done the meeting first. So it's not even just um, a matter of inexperience. Sometimes. Uh, you get so excited to develop these things, and I'm sure the readers of Chandu get really excited for these things. You just dive in without thinking. So um, it is very important that you have those upfront meetings and that you um, that you really put, as Chandu said, put everything aside and just ask the necessary questions to solve the problem because really Excel is the tool to help you solve the problem, right? Excel is not the solution. It's the tool that brings you to the solution, the means to the end. Um, and following... Uh, uh, your question about executives, and it's definitely true. I've shown stuff um, where they've said, well, they, they asked for a dashboard, and I said, okay, I'll put it all on one page, and they say, oh, that's too many charts on one page. Um, so that one's always kind of a, a funny one, so I'll break it up. Um, that's not a big a big deal, but then I think, well, that's not ne what you want isn't necessarily a dashboard. So sometimes you have to ask the questions to realize when they're talking about a dashboard, what they really mean is an interactive Excel application, which may not necessarily have any monitoring in it um, at all. So the other thing is, um, uh, when I used to work uh, with our government clients, I remember people, we would uh, we would outbrief some really high level folks, and I would hear from my colleagues. They would say, "Well, keep it simple." Uh, you know, the people at the executive level, they don't really want any of the hard stuff. They don't really want anything that they have to think about. And so we got into a meeting with, with someone, and, we, and he was asking these questions. And we're like, oh, well, those are, those are down in the weeds questions. And he said, well, I'm a down, down in the weeds kind of guy. So we thought, oh, well, what were we doing? So the most important thing to understand your audience. So I think this is definitely all um, just really re saying everything that Chandu has said so far in a different way. But um, that is my personal experience that, you know, we make these assumptions about, especially when it comes to executives, oh, they want this really sort of analytical they want this really sort of um, high-level overview, keep the data out. Really, you, ne you need to talk to them. You need to talk to the people who t work with them and talk to them too um, to really understand audience requirements because I don't think that there is one general rule you can say for an executive or for someone else that this is, this is exactly what they want. Yeah, they're, and that's actually been my experience. Yeah, so, so so much of that in my experience has been is personality based. It yeah. is. It is. Um, yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, and then for me, it's is skill. You know, because um, when you start talking about executives, I haven't dealt with executives since um, '08, right? Because my clients, yeah, they're the, the insurance guy with it and his assistant, or the you know physical therapist, or the call center director. Um, they have very different needs. And there was one thing that I wanted to say, oh, yeah, about, you know, in, inside the Excel community. And um, 
you know, asking a question and then being quiz. Why do you want to do it that way? Why don't you do it this way? Why don't you get this thing and that thing? Well, because of my audience, right? Some three person office, they want something in Excel or even some small three person department that's gone rogue because they can't get cooperation from the IT department. They're paying me out of their budget or out of their pocket, right? To go around what's available because of whatever weaknesses. So that's why we're doing it in Excel. Okay, so um, you know, I had an issue here recently, you know, somebody saying in a forum, you know, you really should be doing this in a database. I agree, in a perfect world we would, but that's not how we got this. <laughs>